You want to know what happened, probably. Yes, what the heck happened? Yes, what the heck happened? Well, I was taking the, what do you call this, a, like a laundry sink? Utility tub. Utility tub, and I thought I had to close the water off going to it, but it turns out these things were just stuck so hard I could hardly turn them. And I thought I had it off, and then I started disconnecting the hoses, and water started squirting everywhere. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, let's tell you what happened last night. We have just over 30 days to get the upstairs ready to lease. So it's go time. We talked to our broker today who's helping us lease the upstairs unit and he's got the listing live. And he called me and was like, I think we could try and get somebody in maybe as early as 30 days, which puts us at like mid January. And I called Jono after. You did, yeah. Because I was like, hey, is it okay that I just committed it to us to like January 15th? Potentially having the unit ready and so yeah. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. So we've got a lot of things we need to do in the next 30 days in order to get the upstairs ready for a potential tenant. And what's on the list there, Sarah? What do we got to do? We need to get the washer dryer hooked up. That's like the number one thing. That's gonna involve some HVAC work, some plumbing, some electrical. It's kind of everything, just for this one little job. Yeah, that's true. We gotta get water there. We gotta get water to drain from there. We need to have a lot of power to run that dryer. And we need venting. And venting. So it is kind of a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. So that's the one biggie. Second biggie is drywalling the wall that goes to the basement. And hopefully the tenants will never know that there was ever a doorway there. So we'll have to drywall. We'll have to paint. We'll have to do updated trim work. That's right. To blend it all in. A little bit of everything for a very small job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are the two like non-negotiables. Yeah, that's right. They can't move in if those things aren't done, so we gotta get them done. So we gotta get back to the house, gotta get start working on it, and line up a few contractors to come in and support us because they're gonna be busy around the holidays here. Honestly, I'm a bit nervous. 30 days and Christmas is coming up, so we're gonna be doing like holiday stuff. Contractors aren't going to be available Contractors if we for available. some reason needed one. Yeah, and we're going to need an electrician. We're going to need a plumber. We might need an HVAC person. And these folks like have long wait lists sometimes, so I think we could pull it off, but we need to like get moving on it here. Like tomorrow. Hey. What are you doing? I'm just loading things in the basement. This in the car. I'm out of breath a little bit because you're going up the stairs. Uh-oh. I want to, well, we want to open up the ceiling today just to get a sense of like what's going on over there and then it'll help us figure out how to do the plumbing for the, the washer and dryer that we're putting upstairs because I'm not quite sure how that's going to work and I want to start reaching out to plumbers to help us with hopefully a small project, just a couple hours on there and I'm really hoping we can do a lot of the heavy lifting ourselves and they just kind of finish it up for us. So we have a tenant, uh, well, uh, prospective tenant coming here in like two hours and I want to do a bunch of work before they get here. We need to get out of the house. We need to be out of the house. So I've got a little bit of time crunch, but I think we can do it. I am going to take some measurements in the kitchen and have those available so that we can start either getting quotes for kitchen companies to come and build some custom cabinets or hit up the IKEA website and uh, order our own. So I'm going to get ready and set up to do that. Even though the January 15th deadline doesn't apply to our lower unit here at Project Cedar, thank goodness, we still have to make all our key decisions about the kitchen layout and appliances right now. In order to run drainage lines and venting for a washing machine in the upstairs unit, we have to open up a bunch of ceiling and walls down here. So we'll do all the plumbing pre-work and kitchen design decision making now. I'm hitting something in here. I don't know if it's because it's metal or if it's just this blade or if it's. Ooh. Maybe I do the outline of this first and then I use the, the Dremel for the deeper cut. I'm not sure. While Jono experimented with which saw was going to be his best option for opening up the drywall, I compiled my measurements for the kitchen. I basically just did a drawing of the perimeter. So. 
figuring out what my out exterior dimensions were. And then I took measurements across to get the width. I took um, some measurements around the sump pump, grabbed a window measurement, and then I also had to account for the bulkhead that's in the wall here. This is where the clean out is. And from here, I can kind of start planning, you know, how much space I'm gonna have for my bank of cupboards. It's gonna go here and here, and then I have to figure out what to do around the clean out. Look at that. All right, we got through. So which tool did you end up using? This one, it works a lot better. All right, now I got- Initial thoughts? Well, I just gotta think about this a little bit. So right above here is the kitchen sink upstairs. And then further, then you can see the pipe goes further back. It tucks up over there. So we have to figure out where do we tie in the washer and dryer upstairs? That's just what I'm not, not sure about. And uh, I don't know, it's uh, the prospective tenant's gonna be here in 50 minutes. And I was hoping to cut upstairs first in that hallway or like before they get here. I don't know if that'll happen. I feel like we're cutting a bit close now. While well, Jono chewed on the thought of what other ceiling and walls we need to open up for tying in the upstairs washing machine, he also got started on opening up the rest of the basement walls that we would need access to. I was thinking initially that this kitchen design was going to be a galley kitchen, which is just, you know, two rows of cabinets and you're working like back and forth um, across the cabinets. It's a pretty nice kitchen layout. I like it. I thought it was going to make sense for the space. But I'm doing some quick research just in terms of depth of washer dryer because the plan was, okay, we've got these two big long banks of cabinets basically in the kitchen. On the one side, we'll just tuck the washer dryer in underneath them, get some front loading units. And I'm just realizing that that's probably not the best idea because washer dryers are deeper than your average cabinet. Like most cabinets are, are you hearing this? <laughs> Most cabinets are 24 inches deep and the average washer dryer unit is 30 to 35 inches deep plus you have to leave four to six inches behind the machine for the water lines, the drainage, the venting. So kind of going back to the drawing board on the kitchen layout and wondering if we need to move things around. And that's when we found ourselves here. Jono asked me in a panic, turn the water off, turn the water off. So I came over here and twisted both of these blue knobs, which are the only valves I understand that are here, turned them as tight as they could go to the right. And we still have a stream of water coming in here. So tell me why, why did you do this? We wanted to see what was back here. I wanted to see what was back here and I don't know, maybe we're gonna kick ourselves in the feet, but like, I think there's a good chance these are gonna need to move. We're gonna need more outlets. There's a good chance we're gonna need to move the drain. We're gonna, move, we're gonna just move a bunch of stuff over here. And sometimes in the past, I've worked really hard to like not disrupt the drywall too much. Mm -hmm. And just taken so many more hours and more. So here we're just opening it up. <laughs> just went for it. And we're gonna, now I've got, a, a, we can see everything. So mm -hmm. this is gonna be a lot easier to work with. And luckily we got the leak under control. So you're headed to the house. What are you going to do? Yeah, I'm going to head out the door here in just a minute. I'm, we're going to open up the ceiling a bit more, open up the drywall okay. for a couple of reasons. But I'm kind of hoping that if we open up that bulkhead, we'll be able to see more of the plumbing, the water supply, the drainage. For upstairs. For the upstairs. Exactly. Plumber's coming on Monday. Today's Thursday. <laughs> Today's like my last day to do some work over there because I'm busy tomorrow and this weekend. So I want to get that drywall down so that when the plumber and electrician come on Monday, they've got a clear view of what we're working on. So I've got uh, tools in the car. I'm also taking these with me. Okay, Sarah, you guess. I've got these things. Mm. I'm gonna make a stop on my way. He's gonna get chicken nuggets. I'm gonna pick up some <laughs> chicken nuggets at the grocery <laughs> store and uh, mm. keep them in the freezer there and that'll keep me going for like a week. Oh, uh, that's a I'll good idea. I won't have to get takeout yeah. all the time. And I'll get rid of these things. Like we've had like, we have like four of these in reserve for some reason in our pantry, uh, so I'll get them out of here. Cause you panic bought branch <laughs> <laughs> barbecue <laughs> sauce. Yeah. While Jono did more drywall demo, I figured out next steps for the kitchen. Yeah, I have pink eye today. Um, it's a good look for me, eh? 
Anyways, I'm just working on thinking about the kitchen and realizing that I didn't update you guys on what we're thinking in terms of the layout. So I was all confused yesterday about whether it was gonna be a galley kitchen or I was gonna have to go back to some sort of L shape or a claustrophobic tunnel kind of thing with a stacking dryer washer unit right up by the window. I came up with a solution, it seems quite obvious, but there are actually compact washer dryer units that you can buy. So instead of having to put like a full size unit uh, side by side, we can just get compact ones. And instead of being 30 to 35 inches deep, they'll only be 24 or 25, which is the same depth as your standard base cabinets. So amazing, uh, we'll just buy compact ones. And the price difference, it's not like you pay a big premium for those. So we're gonna stick to the new original layout and have our nice galley kitchen after all. Woohoo! All right, one other quick update. This morning I uh, was emailing a kitchen company that does custom kitchens to organize them to come out and take some measurements and maybe give us a quote for what it would take to do a custom kitchen down in the basement. I used Ikea's kitchen planner to actually price out how much it would cost if we did it ourselves for the install and just bought all the cupboards from Ikea. And I think we're looking at about $6,500 just to get all the base cupboards which is not insignificant, and then the installation will be free, but we have to figure out how to work around some some of the bulkheads and the clear out, so it's a little awkward. Um, I'm just gonna see what the pricing is for um, someone to come do it for us and to pay to get like a custom kitchen. Because we're only getting bottom cupboards, I feel like maybe it would be not too expensive. And since there's like some awkward walls and just like corners and stuff, they might be able to help us out. So it doesn't hurt to get a quote. You don't have to pay for quotes and it just gives you more information to make your decision. So Monday, we're having a custom kitchen company come out to give us a quote. What I wanna do is take this bulkhead down and kind of see it here. I wanna take it down the whole way down this room. So I don't know, that's, 18 feet, something like that. And what I'm hoping is that once this bulkhead is down, a lot of things can happen all of a sudden. I am hoping that I can see upstairs a lot better so that we can do the plumbing for the washer and dryer, which is absolutely the priority to get the upstairs running. Uh, and then the other thing that it should do is I can much more easily add pot lights in the ceiling here. And uh, I know I shouldn't be thinking about this, but deep down, I want to replace all the copper lines with PEX lines. We'll see, a bit of a stretch goal. Let's just open this up first and go from there. All right, all done. Well, kind of. The bulk of it is down, no pun intended. And now I'm gonna take a peek to see, you know, sort of plumbing and electrical can I see from upstairs? Mostly plumbing. But yeah, no like surprises, no mouse poo, no dead spiders. So that'll make Sarah happy to know. So we just met with our kitchen, custom kitchen quote person. We've got some nice people to work with if we decide to go with them. Yeah. I know we just said we were probably gonna do an Ikea kitchen, but now I feel mean, like we're both thinking, let's just work with them, because they make it so easy. Um, let's just close this door. They make it really easy. They do all the measurements. How it works is they come out, they do some rough ones to do a drawing, and then they go into their little drawing program and uh, give you like two files of what it could look like. Yep. Um, so you can envision it. She offered to do a couple variations for us too because we were not sure about a couple details. And then if you say yes, you want to go with them, they come out and do a second set of measurements for actually like before they go and cut the cupboards. Yeah, they measure to the eighth of an inch instead of exactly. just kind of roughly measuring. 
yeah. And it's kind of nice because in this kitchen, like we have the sump pump to figure out, we have the clean out bulkhead to figure out. So it's sort of nice in a way to have some help. Yeah, they just have a lot of experience that they can draw from and they mm -hmm. understand cabinets and yeah. appliances and so they just have great ideas. Mm -hmm. So even if we don't go with them, this is valuable. We, we're learning and that's kind of the important thing. Yeah. All right, I know smoke alarms aren't sexy, but they are really important, <laughs> important. for safety. Yes. And the building inspector is like all about safety, so we want to make sure we do these smoke alarms correctly. So what we have to do is add smoke alarms both upstairs and downstairs, and we need to interconnect them. So if any smoke alarm goes off in any part of the house, all of the smoke alarms go off, which will be like seven or more. <laughs> There's like a that. lot. There's a lot of smoke alarms. And the other thing about smoke alarms is that the modern code requires that these have flashing lights on them. So they're not only very loud, but they also have flashing lights. So like, they're gonna wake you up. You're gonna, you're gonna you know if there's a fire. So what we need to do to get ready is we need to add smoke alarms to each of the bedrooms upstairs, which candidly I was a little surprised we had to do because we're not really touching the upstairs at all, but we have to. Mm -hmm. And then we have to add a smoke alarm downstairs here in the new bedroom we're building. And then we have to upgrade the smoke alarm that's in the hallway here and then the one that's in the hallway upstairs. So I've got a lot of smoke alarm work. Basically what I need to do is run a 14-3 wire between each of these smoke alarms. What's a 14-3 wire? So a 14-3 wire, I'll show you an example here, but it's a wire, like you can see behind me, that has, well, there's actually four wires in it. There's mm -hmm. a white wire and a black wire. Those are, that's sort of standard. A 14-2 would have a white and a black. And a 14-3 includes a red wire. And there's also the copper ground wire. So it's technically like four. Wires. What's the red wire for? The red wire, I don't, I'm gonna botch this. <laughs> so you, we should like put a link to a YouTube video, but it basically means that they can uh, like communicate multiple ways. So a smoke alarm can communicate to all the other smoke alarms mm. with this red wire. Mm -hmm. It's the same for like a three-way switch. If you add a light switch that, or light that can be turned on and off in two places, it needs that red wire. So you can see this smoke alarm has the black wire, the white wire and this red one's not connected ah. so we need to get this red one connected but we also can't use this smoke alarm because it doesn't have the big strobe light. so that's what this wire is here and i'm starting to figure out how to get the wire throughout the house where it needs to go to get these smoke alarms up and running i'm reporting here on the 21st of december the shortest day of the year and just hanging out here in the office and I got the drawings back from the company we met with on Tuesday this week to look at kitchen for the basement unit. And yes, if you're wondering, I do have pink eye again, this time in my left eye. Some of these decisions in terms of where the sink is gonna be and where the water will need to be and where the electrical will need to go, we do need to know um, in order for the plumber to come in to get the upstairs washer dryer unit installed. So it's kind of all connected. Anyways, I wanted to share the drawings with you. So here's a shot of the kitchen from the Kitchen Cabinetry Company. They took the measurements the other day, documented all the dimensions, and then did this 3D visualization with a suggested layout based on our requests that we shared when we met in person on Monday. I think they look really good. There's two awkward parts to this kitchen. One is that there's this bulkhead along the wall where the clean out is. And the other awkward piece of is a sump pump, of course, and how it comes out pretty far into the room. And your traditional 24 inch cupboards here won't cover it. So their suggestion was to just make an extra deep cabinet there, have it come out a little bit more. I think it looks pretty tight with the washer dryer unit across the way. However, I found some compact ones that are like maybe 22, 24 inches deep. And I think these are assuming they're 30 inch machines. Uh, I like the, I like the feel. You can absolutely make drawings similar to this if you use the Ikea Kitchen Planner app. Um, if you wanna go the Ikea Kitchen route more DIY. The only thing was, if your room has unconventional characteristics or quirks like this one does, such as the bulkhead and the sump pump, you can't account for those, uh, as far as I could tell, in the app. It's just assuming square walls and uh, 
no holes in the floor. <laughs> so it's a little bit tough. It just, it does make it a little bit tougher to feel confident in the precision of your measurements. While Sarah worked on kitchen details, I did what I hope was the last bit of drywall removal over at Project Cedar. I cleared out part of the wall in the closet where the washer and dryer will go so we can see where we'll be able to tie it into the plumbing downstairs. And then we opened the wall right next to our electric panel since we're going to be adding a separate meter and panel, one for each unit. After that, we pretty much went into holiday mode with some scheduled travel plans and many gatherings with dear friends and family. Although we're not yet ready to rent, we're ending the year feeling grateful for everything with Project Cedar to date and like we're well on our way to a productive first few weeks of January. Stay tuned and a happy new year to you and yours.